Jason Tatum is 6'9". Um, this brother got a handle. He can shoot with range. He can score in buckets. Here we go. Tatum. Giannis switches on to him. Tatum and Ana Kupo, the superstar. Step back three on the way. Oh, it banks in. Jason Tatum puts Boston on top. Jason Tatum overnight went from an all-star to possibly in the MVP conversation. He's the next face of the league. That's a man's jam! Jason Tatum! I just love everything about the kid. Um, the way he plays the game, his demeanor, um, you know, where he come from. You know, I know his parents, um, and, and I just know he's, he's just built for, for stardom. He's built for success in that. I'm Jason Tatum from St. Louis, Missouri. First started playing basketball, organized, probably when I was about three, three or four. I was in eighth grade going into my freshman year. I was in the All-American Camp down in Atlanta, Fat Frost Camp. And, you know, I just really stood out, and, and that's the first time I was noticed nationally. And, and I'm just trying to continue to get better ever since then. You know, walking across that stage, you know, getting drafted into the NBA, you know, that's always been a dream come true, you know, if it happens, you know, for any kid that plays basketball. You know, everybody wants to go to the NBA. You know, only so many guys can go, but, you know, the road doesn't end there. You know, that's just the beginning. If you get drafted, you know, you still got a lot of work to do, making a team, starting, and building your own brand, and, you know, being the best player you can be. Ask yourself, am I good enough? Am I the person that can push this team to the next level? How have you dealt with that voice within your own head? Oh, uh, it, it has been tough moments, right? Because, you know, you hear all this talk of, you know, can he be the best player on the championship team? And, you know, nobody can until you do, until it's done, right? You know, nobody knows. And, you know, throughout the season, right, you know, you, you get the new contract and, you know, you're supposed to be the guy and you look up and you're three games under 500 and it's, it's hard. You know, you're coming into every game not knowing the outcome, not knowing whether we're going to win or not, regardless if we're playing the top seed or, uh, you know, non-playoff team. Jason Tatum's story starts in St. Louis, Missouri, but unlike most of his peers, it does not end there. Since he was a kid, Jason had dreams of playing in the NBA. In first grade, his teacher would ask him what he wanted to be when he grew up, and his answer was clear, an NBA player. She would respond by laughing and telling him to change and pick a realistic profession. But Tatum knew in his mind what he wanted and what he wanted to strive for. When his mother caught wind of what the teacher had told Jason, she went up to the school the very next day to confront her. She would tell the teacher, ma'am, with all due respect, if you ask him a question and he answers, I don't think it's appropriate to tell him that's something he can achieve when I'm at home telling him anything he can dream is possible. But Brandy Cole, Jason Tatum's mother, was not about dreaming of your goals, she was about doing. One of the hardest days of Jason's life came when he was only 11 years old. Jason Tatum and his mother, Brandy Cole, were coming home from the store when they noticed a pink paper on their front door. It was an eviction notice. Jason remembers seeing his mother drop to the floor and start crying. But this is how life was for Jason and his mother, often having to go to the next door neighbors to get food from them because they could not afford to eat that night. That was one of the most memorable days of my life. Um, like you said, I was 11. I remember she picked me up, we went to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I'm here helping her carry the bags. She walked up the steps first. And I remember she just dropped the bags and started crying. I'm 11, I'm like, why are you crying? And I see the pink eviction notice on the door. And at the time I just felt helpless. Brittany Cole had Jason while she was young and finishing up law school in St. Louis. Motivated to not let her new baby stop her from pursuing her degree, she would bring her toddler to class with her every day. So afraid that if I took one semester off, that I'd turn into a statistic. So no matter what it was, I made sure I went at least one class every semester. When she would be studying law school, Jason would flip through the books and tell his mom he never ever wanted to read any of these type of books and that he wanted to play basketball. And his mother would respond in the only way she knows how. You better work really, really hard. 
These words resonated with Jason and every morning in high school, he would pop into his mom's room around 5.30 a.m. before heading to the gym to get up some shots an hour and a half before class. His high school coach, Frank Bennett, would say that Tatum would even beat him to school and never took a day off. The only day he ever took off in the four years was the day after they won state. This unmatched work ethic propelled Tatum into being a nationally ranked player in high school. At the age of 15, he would choose to attend Chaminade Prep, a prestigious basketball academy in St. Louis. This school was the same school that his big brother and role model Bradley Bill attended. Sure, I went to my high school because of him. Uh, i never forget, I was in seventh grade, middle school and high school was connected. So he was a senior. Um, he used to take me home every day from school and he won Gatorade National Player of the Year. Senior year, and I was there when they gave him a trophy. And after he did the, the media, he came and told me, he was like, yo, just lock in, you're gonna be here in, in five, four years. Now, not related by blood, Bill was like a brother to Jason. He lived down the street and would drive him home every day in middle school. At the time, Bradley Bill was a nationally ranked player at Chaminade and in his senior year would win Gatorade National Player of the Year. Bill was regarded as one of the best players to ever come out of St. Louis. And he was a clear guide for Tatum to see what he wanted to become and how to get to the NBA. School. And my, my first year was his last year. So when I was in seventh grade, Brad was in, in 12th grade. So that was really the, you know, the stamp. Just um, I had a perfect role model, a perfect like visualization every day of who I wanted, like where I wanted to go, where I wanted to be. And like he was he was living proof. Um, you know, so getting to see him every day in the classroom, working out after practice, and him dropping me off from school every day and going to the games and, you know, seeing him put on the show, it was like, it was the, it was a perfect scenario for me because this was like, I want to get to where he's getting to and I get to see, you know, his everyday routine um, up, up close. So he always was telling me that, you know, he wanted to do for me what, you know, nobody did for him. And Tatum's freshman year in Chaminade, he would average 13 points and would be receiving looks from major colleges across the country. At the end of his freshman year, his dad, Justin Tatum, would get hired at Chaminade's rival school in St. Louis, CBC. After turning down the chance to transfer over to CBC to play for his father, it started a dad and son rivalry inside of St. Louis. The days before we were about to play, we prep. Now we got to guard Jason. Like, this is what I'm finna talk about you and tell you how to slow my son down. This is the toughest thing in the world. First time I played it, we beat him. But from then on, uh, I didn't win another game. Although they never lived in the same house, Justin Tatum played a huge role in Jason's life. The two would talk to each other every day. Justin was the one who introduced Jason to the game of basketball as he was a college standout and a professional himself. After playing professionally overseas, he decided to return home to St. Louis to coach his son. But I, my, my pops was, he, he was the one who put the ball in my hand uh, from as early as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, from three to I was 14, you know, he was my coach, the person I worked out with. Mm -hmm. He was very hard on Jason and would often have him play against players much older than him. In fifth grade was when Justin realized that Jason could be special. He had had Jason playing in a grown man's league and was averaging 25 points a game. Although impressed, Justin was never satisfied with his son. No matter how much Jason scored, he always wanted more out of him. I was tough on him. He was probably in the fourth grade. We were losing at halftime. Jason was playing soft. I go in the middle of half court. I grab him up by his jersey and I lift him off the ground. And I tell him how soft he's playing. Now, I mind he's fourth grade, you know, so I'll, your, your son is just bawling, he's tearing, he's crying, and he scored about 30 points straight, and we won. And For Jason, it seemed like he could do nothing right in his dad's eyes. Even when he got his first college letter in the mail, his dad took it and tore it up, telling him that we only care about offers. I remember I was in seventh grade, I got my first letter from a college that they're showing interest it was ohio state and that was my favorite school at the time i called my dad and i was like dad can you come over and show you something and i remember he came out i ran outside and <laughs> i handed him the letter and he looked at it tore it up in front of me and i remember he threw it in the trash he was like did they offer you a scholarship 
I was like, no, he was like, well, this don't mean anything. This tough love from his father would drive Tatum to get better every day. He could have a game in high school where he would score 40 points and his dad would leave early. Or he would have a big play, a big dunk, and he would see his dad in the crowd look unimpressed. Often he would tell his dad about the great game that he had and his dad would say, you're supposed to do that. He knew what kind of player I could be. It was some days that, you know, I, I wanted to quit, you know, because he was yelling at me so much or, you know, that I didn't think it was that serious at the time. And, you know, I just really, sometimes I just feel like I couldn't take it anymore. This would only feel Jason to work harder in the gym to get his dad's approval. Because I, I was the number one player in the country in high school. And I had other kids on my team who was, if they would score, I would see their, their dad stand up and clap. I could have 40 and he would like, he would never clap. He would just sit there. He would leave. Like I wouldn't see him after the game. And I would call him like, yo, you see what I did? He was like, you supposed to do that. It, it just drove me crazy. I would go to the gym thinking like, all right, if I, if I do this, if I, if I score 50, then maybe that'd be good enough. And that honestly, that drove me. For Jason, all he wanted to do was make his dad proud of him. The two didn't have much of a relationship outside of basketball. So Jason felt this was the only way that he could connect with his father and gain his respect. It was really more so being around my friends and seeing their dads and the relationship that they had. Honestly, me and my dad, we only, like we didn't do normal kid and dad stuff. It was always basketball or I'm sorry. It was always basketball and um, or go to the barbershop. Like, that's something I wish I had. This was a lot of fire under Tatum, and in high school, you could see it. He would bump his scoring total up to 26 points a game. But his junior year is when he would get all the accolades and national praise. He averaged 25.9 points, 11.7 rebounds, and 3.4 assists per game and was named an All-American. That summer, he would show out in Nike's very prestigious EYBL League, Peach Jam Tournament. He would lead all scorers with 26.5 points a game, beating out guys like Harry Giles and Wendell Carter Jr. Tatum now was a household name and was the number one ranked player in the country. And prior to his senior year, he would make a big announcement that would help change his life. He would commit to Duke University to join one of the most stacked recruiting classes that Duke has seen in a decade. Despite his great junior year, he took another leap his senior year. Being the number one ranked player according to ESPN Top 100, he put on an absolute show. It was full with a handful of 40 point games, including a 40.17 rebound game against Benettonville High School and its star Malik Monk, a 46 point game against Huntington Prep and Miles Bridges, and a 40 point game against DeMatha Catholic High School in the top ranked Markel Fultz. Tatum would end the year with six 40 point games and multiple accolades to go along with it. He would win Mr. Basketball Missouri, be named to the McDonald's All American team, and won the Gatorade National Player of the Year. And to top it all off, he would win a state championship in his state of Missouri. By the end of his four years of Chaminade, the whole country knew who Jason Tatum was, and they knew that this kid was going to be special. Shortly after his senior year, Tatum would enroll at Duke alongside his best friend and number two ranked player in the country, Harry Giles. Despite the hype, Tatum missed the first eight games, but when he finally would get on the court, he proved why he was that highly ranked. He had put his full skill set on display, quickly showcasing his NBA potential. In his one year at Duke, Tatum averaged 16.8 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 2.1 assists. The team finished 28-9 and in a second seed in the NCAA tournament, only to lose in the second round to South Carolina. After his one year at Duke, Tatum declared for the NBA draft. Going into the draft, everybody knew who the three best players were. Jason Tatum, Markel Fultz, and Lonzo Ball. Markel was a clear number one pick and had a great year at Washington where he would show off elite playmaking and scoring ability. But Tatum was making headway as maybe the most talented player in the whole draft. He had made so much headway that Boston would actually trade down to have a chance at getting him after Markel and Lonzo were off the board. And with the third pick, they selected Jason Tatum out of Duke NBA University. Draft, the Boston Celtics select Jason Tatum. 
fulfilling his dream that he had since first grade when his teacher laughed and told him to choose a different profession. And greater than that, he did something that he's been trying to do his whole life. He had made his father proud. It was like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. It was like I was living in a dream and I stood up and I gave my mom the biggest hug I could. And I remember I told her, I said, we did it. We did it. I wanted to take her up there with me. And then you turned to your dad. Mm -hmm. What did he say? He said he was proud of me. Is that the first time he'd said that? No, it wasn't the first time. It wasn't the first time, but it wasn't far after that. Jason Tatum has been under the spotlight since he was 14 years old in St. Louis. He then went to Duke University for a year, arguably the greatest organization in college basketball, and now was on the winningest franchise in NBA history, the Boston Celtics. Going top five in the NBA draft usually means a lot of opportunity for that draft pick, but that was not the case in Boston. The previous season, this team had reached the Eastern Conference Finals, and the year prior, they had just drafted a guy at the same position as Jason Tatum in Jalen Brown. It was a part of me that didn't really want to go to Boston because they just was the number one team in the East. They had Isaiah Thomas, Al Horford, Smart JB, Jay Crowder. I was like, I mean, I'm not gonna play. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get buckets. To make matters worse for Tatum, they acquired all-star forward Gordon Hayward, pairing him up with his college coach and Brad Stevens. And they would also get all-star guard Kyrie Irving from the Cleveland Cavaliers. This team was loaded and Tatum was expected to perform from day one. In his first game, he was thrown into a stacked starting lineup of Kyrie Irving, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, himself, and Al Horford. Now for most rookies, their first game is super stressful and very nerve wracking, but Tatum's was on a whole different level. The NBA scheduled the Celtics' very first game to be against the Cleveland Cavaliers, which would open up the entire NBA season. The Cavs were the defending Eastern Conference champions and Kyrie Irving's former team. This game meant so much more than just a regular opening night. This was Kyrie Irving's first game back in Cleveland after shocking the world and requesting a trade in the offseason. This was also the conference finals rematch as these two teams had battled it out and Cleveland got the better hand with Boston. And of course in his first game of his career he was up against the best player ever at his position in LeBron James. And Tatum's very first shot was his welcome to the NBA moment as he got his shot blocked by LeBron James into the crowd. First, the first shot I ever took in the game, I, I set a screen for Kai, I slipped it. Kai threw me a float pass, and I thought I was wide open. So I'm like, I'm gonna get my first bucket, like I'm gonna calm down. And I tried to lay it up, he, he came, I don't know where Brian came, he came sent it to the fifth row. And Tatum struggled in this game and did not score the entire first half. But that was not the storyline of the first half. Five minutes into the game, Jason Tatum's season would completely flip over. The guy that probably hit the biggest shot in Cavs history. They're going up. Oh my goodness. Hayward came down so hard. Oh, Hayward broke his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. In a routine alley-oop play, Gordon Hayward would snap his foot in the wrong direction in one of the most gruesome injuries you will ever see. Instantly, the air of the stadium would leave and no one would move. Players seemed to lost their heart to play. And to have it all this season for him come crashing down what five minutes into the ball game is very, very unfortunate. And as you know, Kyrie alluded to, there are a game, a game to be played, but Skip, your heart just breaks. They did, however, finish the game and Tatum had a better second half, finishing with a double-double in his NBA debut. But the only thing on everyone's mind was Hayward and what the Celtics would do now. Hayward would be ruled out for the rest of the season and all eyes would turn to Boston's two young wings, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. You never want to see somebody get injured. We were all sad for him, but I knew it was, it was my time and never looked back. 
When drafted to the Celtics, Tatum did not expect to have a huge role as they were stacked from the year before and had just added two All-Stars. But with Hayward leaving five minutes into the season, he knew he had to step up. He would start in all 80 of the games he played that season and would finish with 13 points, four rebounds, and one assist a game. The Celtics team would still finish second best in the East with a 55 and 27 record. While gearing up for the NBA playoffs and finishing off the season, the Celtics got hit with another major injury. This time it was Kyrie Irving who would have left knee surgery ruling him out for the remainder of the season. Once what looked like the most talented team in the NBA had lost both of their all-stars, leaving their team's faith in a second year in a rookie's hand. Tatum was forced to grow up in the league extremely quick and would take on a huge role as the team's top option. This was the same team on draft night that he was worried if he would even have a big role on. Boston, losing both their all-stars, had absolutely no expectations going into the playoffs and even though being a two seed, they were the underdogs in every series that they played. Teams wanted to play Boston as we saw a lot of teams fight to get that seven seed knowing that they were going to get a banged up Boston team. But to everyone's surprise, Tatum and Brown would absolutely show out, reaching the Eastern Conference Finals without Kyrie Irving or Gordon Hayward. The Celtics were playing with house money and they had absolutely nothing to lose. They played for the love of the game and for their teammates. Yeah, we was gonna go into the playoffs and it was weird, like we was a two seed, but like every nobody thought we was gonna beat the Bucks, like because we I was I was 19 and JB was in his second year, and, and we had Terry and Smart and Mook. We had like a bunch of like underdogs and, and, and things like that, and that really like that really like boosted our confidence because we had the home court advantage, and you know we were just like we we just felt like we had nothing to lose, so we we beat the Bucks in seven. For the lead, the Celtics rally back. From down 20. So then they was like, all right, you know, that was a fluke. They're not going to beat, they're not going to beat Philly. Philly just, I think Philly beat Miami like 4-1, you know, before that. So they was rolling. Mm -hmm. So they was like, they're not going to beat Philly. So then we was up, we was up on Philly 3-0. And then they they came back and we beat them in five. Ben Simmons, the baseball pass. And Smart's got it. And the ball game is over. And Boston is headed to the Eastern Conference Finals. So now we, like, and like you said, we kind of won the world over, like just how we was playing. And, you know, I, I was leading the team in points. I was averaging like 19, but like JB was giving us 17. Terry was giving us 17 and, and Horford and, and my man Mook was hooping. So we was really playing just like free. Like we had just nothing, nobody had nothing, nothing to lose. That was who like, been. We, we was just going out and playing every night and we was having so much fun. We was locking up, you know, we everybody it was, it was involved and in the conference finals, Tatum had another chance at LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. However, this was a different Cavs team as they had shifted up half of their team halfway through the year. And this was not the same Jason Tatum that LeBron blocked on opening night. Tatum now was more confident and he had the keys to the team in his hands. The series was highly competitive coming down to a deciding game seven in Boston. And in the fourth quarter with the game close and less than seven minutes remaining, Jason Tatum would have his defining moment of his young career. So I remember Smart had the ball, Al come set a pin down for me. And he was like, JT, you get it. You know, attack downhill to make a play for yourself or somebody else. So I remember I got it and I, I turned the corner and it's like everything kind of slowed down for a second. Cause I seen Brian, I'm like, oh, it's like, I gotta try to dunk it, cause if like I, I I didn't think I was gonna dunk him. I was like, let me just try to dunk it. Hopefully I get the foul or something. So I I'm like, oh, so like the first for like five seconds everything slowed down, and as soon as I <laughs> jumped, as soon as I jumped it was like, and then I I'm coming down on the ground, and I don't I don't know why, but I bumped him and I yelled in his face, and I remember he looked <laughs> yeah, at me. Yeah, I loved it. He he after I bumped him he looked at me like. I'm like, oh, let me get back on defense. <laughs> to have this type of rookie run, then to dunk on the best player in the world was absolutely unreal. Tatum had made his presence known that he was going to be someone to keep an eye on for years to come. Word. And that that was kind of the like, all right, I'm gonna be pretty good for a while. And the rest of the game, LeBron would take over, putting on an absolute masterclass, defeating Boston in seven. But Jason Tatum and the Celtics left with their heads high as they just battled LeBron James for seven games and were only one win away from the NBA Finals without Gordon Hayward or Kyrie Irving. And they thought in their heads, they will be back. They have plenty of time to come back and do it again.
So if the Celtics don't get to the finals, the season's a failure. Boston Celtics are going to the NBA Finals, and anything less is unacceptable. After reaching the conference finals in his first year, his second year was full with expectations. The Celtics were not only expected to reach the conference finals again, but they were expected to actually win this time with LeBron James now in the West. And they looked like the best team in the NBA, with Kyrie and Hayward back on the team, and young guys like Tatum Brown and Rozier getting experience in the playoffs, they were the most talented team in the NBA. The season, however, wouldn't go as planned and many expected Tatum to take that leap this year, but it was difficult. Having Kyrie and Hayward back, Tatum struggled to find his role, and the team dealt with chemistry issues the entire year. Kyrie was on the last year of his deal and Hayward wanted to prove that he was still an all-star after his injury. Rozier wanted to be a starter and Brown and Tatum wanted some respect as they had just led this team to the conference finals and now were looked at to be second and third options. You know, Kyrie and, and Gordon coming back and you know they were obviously we know what Kai is capable of but you know Gordon was a, coming off an of all-star the year before and uh, was and still is you know a very very good player. But then you have myself and JB and Terry that, you know, naturally we wanted more. You know, we were young and, you know, we knew what we just, you know, accomplished and how close we got. Um, you know, we wanted more. We wanted to be, you know, the guys. With um, all these individual goals, the team underperformed, finishing fourth in the East and losing in the second round of the playoffs. Year two was a failure. The team lost early in the playoffs and Tatum did not improve at all. His numbers dropped from the previous season from 19 points a game to 15 points a game. And in the offseason, Kyrie would leave for Brooklyn, leaving Tatum as the new leader in Boston. The 2019-2020 season felt like the weight of the world was on Jason Tatum. With Kyrie gone, he was supposed to take over this leadership role. At only 22 years old, he was looked at to lead the Boston Celtics to the NBA Finals. Not only that, the media wanted Tatum to become one of the faces of the NBA. Tatum would take his first leap this year and would go from averaging 15 points a night to 24 points a night and would make his first all-star game and all-NBA team. Everything seemed to be coming together for Tatum in his game this year, but in late January, a tragedy in the sports world would shake Jason Tatum's universe. Breaking news in this Sunday afternoon, five-time NBA champion, former league MVP, Kobe Bryant died earlier this afternoon in Los Angeles in a helicopter crash. Really was like my hero. Uh, you know, the reason I started playing basketball. To becoming a, a friend and a mentor, somebody that I could, could talk to and you know, help me out with, with a bunch of things uh, on and off the court. You know, everybody knows Kobe Bryant's my favorite player. I just remember watching him on the TV and you know, just knowing I want to be just like him. And, uh, I fell in love with basketball. Alongside his father, Kobe Bryant was a huge reason why Jason Tatum was even playing basketball. Kobe was his favorite player growing up, a guy he watched and modeled his game after, even to eventually getting the chance to work out with him in LA. It was just a surreal moment because just looking at him, you know, remembering myself when I was uh, a toddler, you know, uh, just a young kid, watching him on TV and be like, that's what I want to be like. Like, this is why I love basketball because he inspired me. Fast forward, now I'm 20 and I'm having a one on one interaction with him, working out on, like, I'm here working out with you because you inspired me without even knowing, like, easily. I mean, besides my son being born, that's like the best day of my life. This meant the world to Tatum, a guy that he had idolized growing up, now was critiquing his game and showing him some pointers. Many times in games, you could see the resemblance between Tatum's footwork and Kobe's. Often, Tatum using Kobe's moves, his post fades, his mid-range jump shots. You had a chance to work with him. What was the key messages you took from those meetings? The most important thing I remember he asked me was, you know, how much does it mean to you? You know, how important is it to be the best and to be as great as you can? You know, are you going to sacrifice being a great boyfriend or a great friend? Because you got to, you know, work so hard to be the best at what you love to do. And shortly after Kobe's death, the whole season was put on halt due to the coronavirus and would resume in the bubble. The 22 best teams in the league would travel to Orlando for a chance at an NBA championship. 
In the bubble, Tatum picked up right where he left off and would lead his Boston Celtics to another Eastern Conference Finals appearance. And just like his rookie year, he had failed to win and advance to the NBA Finals. Three years and three disappointing playoff runs. Tatum not only had to prove that he could be a star in this league, he also needed to prove that he could win. In his fourth year, Boston would fully hand over the team to Tatum and Brown, trading away Gordon Hayward to the Charlotte Hornets. Once the most talented team in the NBA was left with only two players, Brown and Tatum. This season, Tatum would continue to impress the NBA world with big time performances and countless 40 point games. The hope was that Tatum and Brown would figure out how to coexist together this year and lead them to the NBA Finals. With the league still dealing with COVID-19 outbreaks and very strict team protocols, many teams struggled to find a consistent rotation. But no team had it worse than the Boston Celtics, who led the NBA in total times missed due to COVID. And they were labeled underachievers and finished the season 36 and 36 with the seventh best record in the East. And in the playoffs, they would meet the fully loaded Brooklyn Nets with Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and James Harden. Losing in five games in the first round, this would be Jason Tatum's earliest playoff exit. The loss is of a sore taste as Tatum was without his co-star Jalen Brown and had to put on a show, scoring 50 points in the Celtics' only win over the Brooklyn Nets. But there's still so much more that Jason Tatum needed to prove to the world. Very quickly after their Game 5 loss, Boston would promote their head coach, Brad Stevens, to the front office and bring in a new head coach in Emin Udoka. No one knew what to expect from this team, a new head coach on an underachieving team. Many saw last year as a clear indicator that Boston would not be able to get over the hump and that Tatum could not be the best player on a championship team. And at the beginning of the season, it seemed like all the critics were correct. Boston did not look like they could go win in the NBA Finals. The start of the 2022 NBA season was terrible for Tatum and the Celtics, and they would start off with a record of 27 and 25. Things were extremely bad for the Celtics. They were repeatedly blowing double digit leads and playing selfish basketball. On November 1st, they blew a 19 point lead to the Chicago Bulls. Oh, listen, listen, I've never seen a turnaround like this before, Mike. On Christmas Day, they blew another 19 point lead to the Milwaukee Bucks. Gets it up. In the absolute lowest part of the season, they blew a 25 point lead on the road to the New York Knicks on an RJ Barrett game winner. Finds Barrett, get a shot up. This is for the win. Oh, it's good. I look back to, you know, those years when we was going to the conference finals and, you know, make you really appreciate those moments. Tatum got accustomed to success as that is all he had seen in his first three seasons. But this was the first time in his career that his team really struggled. It took a lot for him to realize that what he had in the first couple years was not normal. While the media tried to figure out what was wrong with the Boston Celtics, they pointed their fingers at Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They started to question, could these two coexist on the same team? When one is having success, the other one is not. And that's how it is. So as bad as we all would like to see it work, they can't coexist. Every team knows we're trying to go to Jason and Jalen. And every team is programmed and studied to stop Jason and Jalen. I think everybody's talent court is make those guys try to pass the ball. They don't want to pass the ball. And that's something that they're going to learn. They're still learning. With all the unrest in the locker room and the media calling for these two to break up, the team had to have a player only meeting and try to figure all this out. And Brown and Tatum, they had talks between each other and they knew the work they put in that they could work together on the court. In late January, Jalen Brown would tweet out, the energy is about to shift. A tweet that at the time, many people wondered if this was about the Celtics as the team looked bad. After that tweet, the Boston Celtics would finish the season 25 and six on an absolute tear. I know at that moment, the energy was about to change, so I tweeted it out, and we went on a win streak. Smart oh! by Jalen Brown with thunder on Mo Baba. They will shut you down. They defend. On the cut. Oh, good luck oh. by Williams. And right now, I really, really like what I'm seeing from the Oh, what a oh, delivery. Yes. Jalen Williams. And Tatum would have his best year as a pro. 
finishing in the top five of MVP voting, earning all NBA first team honors, and leading the Celtics to the second best record in the Eastern Conference. Jason Tatum had arrived. The first round of the playoffs, they would face the Brooklyn Nets once again. This year, Jalen Brown was healthy and they swept the Nets off the court in four games. They would then face Giannis Antetokounmpo and the defending champions, Milwaukee Bucks. In a hard fought series, Tatum and the Celtics would win in game seven and advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. Once again, Jason Tatum was back in the conference finals, but with more pressure than ever, knowing that if he lost this series, that this might be the end of the Brown and Tatum duo. The Miami Heat would battle the Celtics and force him to a game seven and a chance at an NBA Finals appearance. Determined not to lose again, Tatum decided to send a text to an old friend before the biggest game of his life. Sending a text to Kobe Bryant telling him, I got you today, knowing that Kobe would be watching him from above. And in game seven, he indeed had him, scoring 26 points and adding in 10 rebounds in a 100 to 96 win over the Miami Heat. Jason Tatum had finally did it. He had got over the hump and led his Boston Celtics to the NBA Finals. Some of our fourth time in the conference finals is my third time. Uh, and, and, and to get over the hump with this group, uh, it, it means everything. Uh, so I couldn't be proud of, of these guys. The, the road that we took to get here, uh, you know, not a lot of people believed in us. We took the toughest route and uh, it worked out. Now getting to the NBA Finals is one thing, but winning in the NBA Finals is a whole different beast. And Jason Tatum found that out the hard way. The Finals was extremely rough on Tatum as the Warriors never made anything easy for him. And Andrew Wiggins made sure that he could not get comfortable in this series. In the fourth quarters, Tatum would completely disappear due to the Warriors defense. And in an elimination game, he scored 13 points and shot six from 18 from the field and committed five turnovers. He also would commit 23 turnovers in this series in only six games. There is a glaring issue still in Jason Tatum's game as he now holds the most turnovers in a playoffs with 100. But his story is far from over. At only 24 years old, he has led his team to three conference finals appearances won NBA Finals, and has made the playoffs every single year. In some people's eyes, Jason Tatum has a lot to prove and has to show that he can win in this league. But Jason has already proven a lot. He has made his dad proud. He has changed his mother's life. He has went to the biggest university in the world. He has played on the biggest franchise in the NBA. He has been to the biggest stage of the NBA. He has dunked on the greatest player in the NBA. Jason Tatum is winning every day of his life and is doing more than he could have ever dreamed of just being a kid from the loo.